everybody! Thanks for dropping by! Um, I occasionally suffer from a bit of crochet cramp, and I know some of you do too, because every once in a while you leave me little comments about it. Crochet cramp again comes along when you've done a little too much crochet in a day, or maybe you're working a little harder and faster than you normally do because you're trying to get something done. Um, and if you further complicate matters by doing a lot of typing or playing a musical instrument, those little fingers do an awful lot of work in a day. So I'm not a doctor or a kinesiologist, but I have been very active my whole life, and I have developed a set of exercises that I like to go through to help loosen up all of those muscles whenever I feel that I have some crochet cramp coming on. <laughs> and before I show you what I do, I just want to remind you that you need to know your own body. So if you have pre-existing conditions or a physical injury or anything that precludes you from doing any one of these exercises, or if you're trying something and it starts to hurt, for heaven's sakes, stop. Know your own body and don't ever do anything that will hurt you because that's only going to make your cramp worse and you don't want that. <laughs> So, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I do when I realize I've got crochet cramp is I put down the crochet and I stand up. Now, if you can't stand up uh, because either you're on a plane or you're at your desk or maybe you're confined to a chair, the best thing you can try and do is straighten up. And by that I mean straighten up your spine, put your head up, and try to bring your shoulders up, back, and down. This encourages you to Take a couple of breaths, which is probably something that's been not getting a lot of attention when you're crocheting or typing or whatever. Um, and it also helps take some of the immediate strain off of your neck. So quite often when I'm crocheting, I tend to end up looking down and that pulls a lot of strain up and down my neck. So I pick my head up, I try to straighten up my, my posture and take a few deep breaths. This is really important and it already starts to make me feel better. Uh, the next thing I do is I start right at the top. So the eyes. Yes, the eyes. Chances are you have been staring in one direction for a long time. You may not even be blinking much. So I like to take a few moments and blink. Nice, slow blinks. Kind of let your eyeballs re-moisten themselves. <laughs> and then I focus way, way, way far away, as far as I can, and then close up. And then far, far, far away, and then close up. And I do this a few times so that I can feel the muscles in my eyes getting a little bit of a workout. Then I look all the way to one side and all the way to the other. All the way to one side and all the way to the other. And then up and down and up and down. And then I blink a few more times. And then I roll my eyes around. And you might think this looks funny or feels funny, but it's really important that you give your eye muscles a chance to stretch out and do something a little bit different. It makes you feel better, it helps uh, sort of stave off any eye strain you might start having, and doing eye exercises is actually good for your eyes for the long term because you may be less inclined to develop vision issues. So my eye doctor is always telling me to do lots of eye exercises, so I always start with my eyes. The next thing I do is I go to my neck. So open your mouth, let your jaw hang a few times, because if you're not talking for a long period of time, you might find that you're gritting your teeth, especially if you're working on a tight, pro a tight like a difficult stitch. So open your jaw, close it, open it, loosen up your jaw, and then you can start to move your neck around. Keep your head up, keep your chin up, and do really slight motions to the left and the right. Nothing extreme. Don't ever try to like jump right into some crazy activity, because if you're tense and you're experiencing crochet cramp, that means that your, your muscles are all tight. So the last thing you want to do is try to force them into doing something else right away, because that'll actually make it worse. So nice, slow, left and right, nothing serious. I'm not trying to touch my ear to my shoulder or anything like that. And then I go forward and backwards. So a little forward, a little bit backwards, not all the way. A little bit forwards, a little bit backwards, a little to the left, and the right, and then forward, and backward, and I can already hear clunking. <laughs> and then a little bit of rotation. So don't go all the way back, go from one shoulder to the other, a little bit of gentle rotation. Try to remember to breathe while you're doing it, and relax. It's very important that you try to give your muscles a break. 
So all of the stretching is great, but you've got to remember to be relaxed while you're doing it. And that's the neck. You can do a little bit more of that if you like, especially if you start to feel it really loosening up. And if it feels good, do a bit more, because that's important. Then I move to my shoulders. My shoulders probably suffer the most because I tend to tear, carry a lot of stress through here, and I have pre-existing shoulder injury condition, so I have to be careful with them. Um, and I'm going to hear a lot of clunking, you might even hear it too. <laughs> but this is what I do with my shoulders. So first, I want to work on my posture. I pull my shoulders up, I push them back, and I drop them. Pull them up, push them back, and drop them. And you can probably hear one of your parents in your head saying, sit up straight and put your shoulders back. There's a reason for that. <laughs> All day long we tend to curl forward and as we get older our shoulders just naturally start to pull forward and it becomes harder and harder and harder to keep that posture. Good posture increases blood circulation and breathing. It's really good for your focus and it helps with all of those muscles. It takes all of the strain off them. So keeping your, your posture in mind, as annoying as it might be, especially when you're young and people are telling you to sit up straight and keep your shoulders back, is actually really good for you the older you get. So I try to remember to do a little bit of this. Once I've got my posture in a place that I like it, I start to roll my shoulders. First one, then the other, nothing serious, going backwards. I get a little bit of swing into it, you know, kind of like I'm listening to a nice groove. <laughs> Do that a few times, and then I reverse. I go forward. Kind of like I'm shrugging, sort of like I don't care, but it feels really good, so I'm going to do it a little bit more. <laughs> a little bit of shrugging, and then I do them both together. I roll them both backwards a few times, nice and gently, and then forward too. And I get most of my upper body into it. Remember to breathe and blink. So that's the shoulder rolls. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to get my elbows into it. I'm going to pull up my elbow and I'm going to roll it backwards. Pull up the other one and roll it backwards. Kind of like I'm rowing a boat, but I'm going around in a funny circle. <laughs> Do that a few times and then I go forward. And I can hear crunching, I can hear pulling. I have a little bit of, of grinding across the tops of my shoulders, but it doesn't hurt, so I know that it's okay. So I do a little bit of that, then I do them together. So now I'm really rowing a boat. I'm getting my shoulders into it. I'm rolling my, my elbows backwards, and then I'm going to go forwards. Now, if you're doing this with any kind of, of uh, intensity, you're going to notice that your heat is rising, your, your heart rate may have gone up a little bit, and that's okay. If you're starting to feel lightheaded, stop, sit down, take a few slow breaths, and relax. You don't want to feel lightheaded when you're doing stretching or exercises because that means you're putting too much stress on your body. But if your heart rate is a little bit elevated and your temperature's gone up a little bit and you feel good, that's good because you want your blood to circulate. That's going to help loosen up all of those muscles and it's also going to help get the oxygen surrounding your body kind of moving into, into the right places. It's going to wake you up a little bit. It's really good. So that's a little bit more shoulder rolls. I'm not finished with the shoulders yet. I'm going to get my whole arm into it now. So now I'm going to do a few full-size windmills on one side and a few full side on the other. Now I don't have my arm out completely straight. It's actually fairly relaxed. I'm knocking stuff down. <laughs> Make sure you have space when you're doing this. This feels good. It feels good through here and I can also feel a bit of a stretch running back down my arm. So that's good. Not too much, not too extreme, and I'm leaning one way and the other. If you can, do them both together. Now I find this a little more difficult because of my shoulder issues. But if I do it nice and slow, it actually feels good. And I'll do the same thing going the other way. So I bring them both forward. My heart rate's up. My blood pressure's up. I can feel the heat up. It feels good. <sighs> okay, so that's the shoulders. Now we're going to work on the elbows. The elbows often get locked into one position when we're crocheting or typing. So you want to remind them that they can move. <laughs> so I just do nice, slow, back and forth motions with my arms, bending my elbows, nothing crazy, nothing extreme. I'm going to pick them up sideways and I'm going to do the marionette. So this is just sort of letting your arms dangle a little bit. It actually feels really good. Most of the stress is now contained in your shoulders, but your elbows should be nice and loose. This feels really good to me. And then a little bit more. Just a little bit, just to bend them, let them do something completely different. That's the elbows. 
give yourself a little bit of a shake, a couple of breaths, a couple of blinks, and now we're going to move on to the wrists. Your wrists, if they're anything like mine, might snap a lot when you do this. So nice slow rotations, nothing extreme. I can hear a little snapping. <laughs> this feels nice. Um, it feels good. We also tend to lock up our, our wrists when we're crocheting, so it's important that you give your wrists a chance to do something different. So I move them forwards and backwards. I move them around. There's the snap again. And then I reverse the, the sort of the direction of my arms and I move them forward and backwards again. Nothing crazy. Just a little bit. Feels good. Shake them out. A little bit of loose shaking. Maybe you shuffle, or shuffle your knees around a little bit. And now the fingers. So the fingers are our workhorses and we want to make sure that they get a nice gentle stretch. So I like to stretch my fingers out and then push them a little bit further. So I try to stretch them out as wide as they can go so that I can feel the strain across the palm of my hand. Then I pull them into fists. Thumbs out, thumb on the outside, and I hold that fist as tight as I can make it. So tight that my arm wants to shake. Nice and nice tight fist. Tight, 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 tight. This makes your blood move a little faster. Then open them back out stretch them as wide as they can go, stretch, 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 and then back into fists. And I can feel that all the way across all of my little joints. Tight, tight fists. All of my little knuckle joints are kind of waking back up. So I do that a few times, stretch them out, make them fist, stretch them out, make a fist, and then I just wiggle them. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Shake them out a little bit. Let the blood go back to normal. And then I do what I call the lotus. So I make, uh, I push my palms facing up, I let my, my fists fall into a light, gentle fist, so I'm not holding it tight, they're just nicely, comfortably sitting there, and then I open it like a lotus. So I don't stretch it, I just open my hand, kind of like the sun's coming up in the morning and opening up a flower, really gentle. And I do the same thing on the other side, light, 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 light open and closing, just like a flower, nothing extreme, and then I shake them down again. At this point, I notice that most of my cramping has gone. If it hasn't, then I take a few deep breaths and I start all over again. If you've done this all the way through and you feel really, really tight or you still feel there's a lot of pain, I recommend that you stop the crochet for a while. You can go and do some other activity, you know, if you've got some housework or some homework to do, I recommend you try that. Um, if you've got the time, go for a walk. Walking is great. Walking uses your big motor muscles, it gets your blood circulating, it gets your breath coming in, it makes you breathe a little harder, and it's, it helps um, circulate everything in your body so that all of those little muscles have a chance to relax and the big guys do some work for change. So if you can, go for a walk, because that's really, really good. And one more thing. Water. You have to drink water. Water is the body's lubricant, and if it doesn't have enough of it, it makes it even more difficult for it to keep things like soreness or swelling at bay. You need to drink lots of water, and I know it's hard to remember, especially when we're busy going about our day, but I like to keep a glass of it close by, and once I drain it, I go and I fill it back up, because I want to stay lubricated and hydrated, and that's really, really important. So if you don't have a chance to take a walk, to have a glass of water instead, because it's, um, it's not as good as a walk, but you definitely need the water, so I recommend you do that. And, if you're still in pain, then maybe stop the crochet for the day. You can always go back to it tomorrow. It's really important that you don't stress out your muscles. If you're feeling tightness or, or even numbness, then you've done too much. You really need to take a break sort of stretch out, try to relax your muscles, go for a walk if you can, drink lots of water, and then do something different because you don't want to hurt yourself uh, because that's not a good thing and too much of the same repetitive um, uh, stress can actually cause bigger problems down the road. And I'm sure many of you know people who have had carpal tunnel syndrome or they've actually had to go and have operations done. Nobody wants to have that. So try to remember that if you're feeling cramped up, Stop, do some exercises, do some stretching, have some water, go for a walk if you can, and if it's still plaguing you, stop the crochet for a little while and take a break. There! I hope
hope some of you found that helpful. I know I feel a little more limbered up. I think I'm going to go for a walk now, too. <laughs> we'll see you here again really soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. In fact, we'll see you Friday. Uh, but until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay loose, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody.